What's the risk? Hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is on the FTSE Developed Core Infrastructure Index with net dividends reinvested in AUD. Some people would know the ETF that seeks to track the return of this index as Vanguard's VBLD, and we'll discuss a little about infrastructure in a moment. So your investment philosophy book we wrote, available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. They make a step aside. These are simple concepts. We'd like investors to better understand performance in the short and long term so they can make more informed decisions. We'll just start with what is infrastructure because it's relatively new as an asset class and just sort of popped up maybe in the last 20 to 25 years where it's been categorized and probably first pioneered by Australian super funds and Canadian pension funds in the in the 1990s. Back in the 1990s, people wanted to have access to more of the, the notion of specialised real estate. And, and when you look at all of those names, whether they be pipelines or toll roads or airports or seaports or railways, they're all unique specialty pieces of property that have at the very core of them, a business that manages that asset to generate an income in the form of a quasi annuity income stream. So yeah, I think there was very much so a big increase in demand that started to become apparent back in the 90s. People have looked at it because it's, as you said, long-term income producing assets can be a monopoly or duopoly in a certain area. There's stable cash flows coming in. It's also been pitched as one of those fixed interest replacements, but in an index such as the one we're going to discuss, you're still owning stocks. Anyone who contemplates investing in infrastructure as an alternative to fixed interest is deluding themselves. You've got an asset which is not a debt security per se, and you've got a business being run to extract revenue from the management of an asset. Now, that is not the same as a debt security. Investors that try to convince themselves that infrastructure is a replacement for fixed income securities are taking way more risk without considering the level of that risk. FTSE Russell applies minimum infrastructure revenue thresholds of 65% for the constituents of the indices they run. So this is another thing we're going to talk about probably more in the future. This is an active choice by an index. This points to Russell choosing which of those infrastructure assets meet a certain business management style. So my word, it is an active choice. This is an early risk return pitch from Credit Suisse. Some people have tried to pitch it as fixed income. Here, they've put it in an area in between fixed income and, and equities. A long-established toll road with a population base that's going to reliably use that toll road um, looks much more like a fixed income security and takes much less business management as such. So it's down towards the fixed income end. A new toll road that's being created for a population base that's expected to emerge with the road being constructed to allow people to live there and have decent transportation, that's a whole different ball game because until you've got your captive audience to want to actually utilise that road, it's a much more risky business. There are major differences between actual infrastructure assets. Some do behave much more like a fixed income security, but some are much more like an equity risk. And I think that that's borne out when we start to look at some of the return histories. And this is more recent, obviously, because the index hasn't been around for a long time, but similar since inception to MSCI World in the other time periods, large cap stocks have pulled away. And what I've done here is I've used the MSCI World, including Australia, because this is an infrastructure index that includes Australian companies. The key message here is the returns on infrastructure assets can happen at very different times to the stock market more generally. But when you look at the 2006 to 2023, three returns, by gee, they look very similar. I would suggest to anyone considering including infrastructure in a portfolio, they should look at it in a very similar vein to a global equity portfolio 
and growth of wealth again for comparison using MSO world similar looking performance but you didn't actually see the same falls in 2008 which I've noted there dropped initially and rallied in the second half of 2008 fell again in November and December it was only down about half a percent for the the year which was probably the worst part of the GFC falls initially were very similar to the stock market then there's a rally and I think you'll find that that also coincides with some pretty major interest rate reductions and people were identifying that they weren't going to get as much from their term deposits, their bonds, their, their cash at that time. So they push up the prices of infrastructure and then people you know, take a closer look and go, well, what have I really got here? And it's, uh-oh, it's actually more like a business and down it falls with a lag from the, uh, the actual equity market of about six to 10 months. Range of returns, the worst 12 month period for infrastructure begins towards the end of 2008. Usually for a lot of equities, it started a year earlier. In this case, it's a little more mild too. So it didn't even pass 30%, which is probably positive, but uh, it's still a hefty fall. The one year numbers here are very insightful. When you look at the range between best and worst, it's got a decided equity feel to it. And and then when you flow right through to the you know the 15 year data you can see you've got returns that are very similar to equities as well and and the range of uh, 15 year result numbers may be a little narrower than equities but not by a lot and rolling annual returns. We'll have a brief look at this one, but for context, I've actually made an additional slide here in the next one with MSCI World in blue. And while the since inception returns are similar, they're not quite correlated with large cap stocks globally. And there are some periods where infrastructure is winning and large caps are losing and vice versa. But over that time period, they've kind of ended up in the same place. In an earlier conversation we had, you said that the correlation is about 0.6, which is a pretty strong correlation but it's not exceptionally high. And it's obvious from this chart, there are periods where the infrastructure index more broadly will precede the developed equity markets in superior and negative returns. And there are also periods where it will lag. Fairly strong correlation, but nowhere near the same. Historic chance of positive or negative. This is more like an equity profile than a uh, fixed interest profile. You're absolutely right, Daniel. You're 100% right. This this is an equity-like risk return chart. The 10-year the numbers, there's not a solitary negative there. The five-year numbers, it's purely a function of, you know, 2007, 8, and 9 being in those five-year numbers. And then as we go to the shorter periods of time, particularly like the one and the three months, one-third or thereabouts to two-thirds looks decidedly like an equity investment. It's the same as, as REITs at some period. People thought they were a substitute for bonds and then they got a surprise somewhere along the line. And it happened very quickly into the inception of this index. And despite people who hold physical versions in, in pension funds and, and try to say, oh, the volatility isn't there, uh, you still run into the same sort of risks. Uh, some people felt that they'd found the magic pudding, the low risk, high return investment. And for a short period of time, a lot of investors and indeed analysts believed they'd found it until they hadn't. It showed that return patterns were more like equities, and that's what investors now need to understand. I think you were making some point there before we actually started. Some of these assets they're going to need, it's great to have a toll road, but eventually as things grow, you might need a toll road somewhere close by, so you're not the monopoly anymore and things change. And uh, We've got a great example of that. If you look at the amount of traffic that goes across the Carl Expressway in Sydney, right on Circular Quay in Sydney Harbour, that traffic's nothing like what it used to be 30 years ago, because 30 years ago, there wasn't a tunnel that went underneath Sydney Harbour from North Sydney to the other side of the harbour. Every single infrastructure asset either has to have capital spent on it to keep it current to the demands of communities, or it'll get replaced by assets that are new and better serve the interests of communities and indeed serve the interests of new growing communities. It's important to recognise that all major infrastructure assets have actually got a use-by date. The largest 
falls in time and fall and time and recovery. As we said earlier, more mild. This one's actually exactly capped at 12 months. Obviously, we're using monthly data, so it doesn't go any further than that. But a uh, quicker time to recovery, as you see, there's a big flat line there before it actually did recover. One thing I would, would make the point here is that this is probably heavily influenced by the dollar because if you saw the hedge version of, of this index, it actually takes off through the 2010s quite sharply and recovers a lot quicker. Just more broadly, 54-month period relative to, say, developed stock markets, you know, up around sort of 76 months, I think it is. Yeah, you can see say, well, the volatility of high to high is shorter, but it's still a heck of a lot closer to equities than it is to bonds where the periods to recovery, generally speaking, are way, way shorter than this. Risk return or efficient frontier start 2006. So not a massive amount of time in here, but as you'd see over the time frame, paired quite closely with MSCI World. Yes, I concede that this is only a 17-year period, but when you look at the way in which the infrastructure index result is almost identical to an even split of the world index and the Australian ASX 300, what more evidence do you need that it behaves like an equity? It's got the same return effectively and it's got the same volatility. And that's why I believe so firmly that infrastructure needs to be considered as part of the equity exposures in any portfolio. And sources of descriptions of data. Again, thanks for your time. Okay, and bye for now.